Hello everyone, welcome to All or None Law Team, um, a video on syndromes of uh, inappropriate ADA secretion. First of all, I would like to thank you for subscribing to our channel. It's an effort to um, share and educate um, uh, medical knowledge. And I know hyponatremia being a very hated topic, but if you understand it, it's like mathematics. Let's talk about syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. You suspect SIADH in any patient who has hyponatremia with hypoosmolality, that is the serum osmolarity is low. The normal serum osmolarity is between 275 to 295 or you can say 285 to 295 anything below that is hypoosmolar so hypoosmolarity and a urine osmolality of about 100 milliosms i want you to be aware that a urine osm of little over 100 is not necessarily diagnostic of siedh because urine osm changes with serum osm and you have to take in accordance with that but in general, you suspect SIDH based on these things, hyponatremia, hyposmolality, and the urine osmolality above 100. What I want you to remember is that SIDH is a disorder of impaired water excretion, which is caused by the inability to suppress the secretion of the ADH hormone. Let's look into the pathophysiology of SIADH. Right now, I want you to focus on this central part which is the ADH which is the antidiuretic hormone secreted by the posterior pituitary. The job of the antidiuretic hormone or the vasopressin is to tell the kidneys to hold on to the water and it just does only free water retention which is by V2 receptors in the convoluted tubules that is the distal part of the nephron. It has nothing to do with the salt absorption like in PCT or in DCT where sodium absorption will lead to water absorption as well. But in the distal part of the nephron, ADH mediates free water absorption without any relation to salt. Now when you absorb free water, that's what determines the concentration of the urine. So if you have more ADH, so you will absorb more free water from the tubules and hence urine will be concentrated. Now, what is the stimulus for the secretion of the ADH? It is, say for example, hypovolemia, hypotension, for example, in heart failure patients or in dehydrated patients. So basically, in those cases, pituitary is stimulated based on a osmoreceptor that is that has the osmolarity, which picks up the osmolarity in the serum and then secretes ADH which tells the kidneys to hold on to the water so that there is prevention of fluid loss. Now if you are euvolemic and you are still secreting ADH that becomes inappropriate ADH secretion. Now when your inappropriate ADH secretion happens what are the causes? Some of the causes include strokes, CNS diseases, pulmonary diseases, malignancies and idiopathic. We will go over these causes in subsequent slides. Under these circumstances, ADH is secreted irrespective of the volume status. So even if the patient is euvolemic, ADH is secreted, which goes and tells kidneys to hold on to the water. Now kidneys will be under the influence of ADH because they are being told that they need to hold on to the water. When this happens, I want you to remember this term that urine osmolarity is fixed. Who fixes it? ADH. Why? Because it's being secreted at a constantly high level and hence the urine osmolarity is fixed and the kidneys now think that every time, irrespective of the volume status, I have to get the urine concentrated by holding on to the water. And when they start doing that, what you see is the urine becomes concentrated and again here, there is a retention of the free water in the body. This is what dilutes your serum sodium and hence hyponatremia occurs. 
as I said since you are concentrating the urine so you are taking the free water back so you are just excreting more salt from the kidney and hence your urine osmolarity goes up why does the urine sodium goes up although kidneys are trying to hold on to the water under the influence of the ADH they try to act over smart and what they do is that they use their PCT and the DCT wherein they know that if they absorb sodium they will also absorb water so what they think is that if they get rid of the sodium then they can get rid of the water as well so they are trying to compensate the forced action of the ADH on the distal tubules so what happens is they will start losing more sodium in the urine and hence the urine sodium goes up as well under normal circumstances when you drink water for example when you are dehydrated then the EDH secretion will be suppressed but in syndrome of inappropriate EDH secretion despite with water ingestion the EDH secretion continues to remain high and hence it adds to more free water retention in the body and dilutes the serum sodium now I told that ADH is an important regulator in SIDH whose regulation is impaired. There are four different varieties that can happen. Type A is a erratic and unregulated ADH secretion happens, hence there is no relation to the plasma osmolality. The second one is there is a modest and a constant release of the ADH happening. Third thing is there is change the osmostat remember I was telling that there are osmoreceptors in the posterior pituitary sorry the hypothalamus sending signals to the posterior pituitary to secrete the ADH depending on the osmolarity if the osmolarity goes up ADH secretion goes up type D is the normal osmoregulation but the urine is still concentrated even if ADH is suppressed so means that even with the slightest of ADH the kidneys are acting in the favor of ADH and concentrating the urine and this is the least common of all why I want to tell you about type C is that in type C the typical serum sodium varies between 125 to 135 when it is because of the resetting of the osmostat you don't have to worry that the serum sodium will continue to get worse with next subsequent days because the osmostat has been set to a level and the serum sodium will remain at that lower level that's all so what are the causes so CNS causes includes anything in the brain like trauma stroke hemorrhage infection psychosis the one thing which I did not include like any sort of CNS malignancies as well then malignancies including small cell lung cancer it's one of the paraneoplastic syndrome very rarely with other types of lung cancers like bronchogenic large cell cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma it's rare to see with them still possible head and neck cancers olfactory neuroblastoma and then extra pulmonary small cell cancers can also give rise to this recently i saw a case of idiopathic sidh and a malignancy workup revealed renal cell carcinoma there has been no case reports of sidh in renal cell carcinoma but hyponatremia has been demonstrated in renal cell carcinoma the mechanism is not known and it is shown to be a worse prognostic indicator for renal cell carcinoma among drugs there are various drugs that causes SIDH but I want you to remember top four the one which starts with there are three C's so three C for SIDH chlorpropramide carbamazepine cyclophosphamide and then SSRI is very commonly prescribed medications especially in elderlies which causes hyponatremia pulmonary very common with pneumonias be it viral bacterial or any other pneumonias less common very less common with other things like asthma atelectasis acute respiratory failure and pneumothorax other causes include Id idiopathic where you cannot find any cause hiv there could be some mutations in the v2 receptors leading to hereditary sidh and then post-surgical because of the pain mediation adh release can happen one thing I want you to remember that there is an entity called cerebral salt pasting syndrome seen in CNS disorders which should not be confused with SIADH 
cerebral salt weight sickness syndrome primarily is due to excessive loss of salt from the kidneys leading to volume depletion which causes ADH release. This is completely different from SIDH. It's very tough to clinically differentiate between one versus another but volume hypovolemia is more prominent in cerebral salt wasting syndrome. What are the diagnostic criteria? So obviously hyponatremia. Clinical examination is very important because that tells you that there is hyponatremia and hypotonicity meaning that serum sodium is low but euvolemia meaning that ADH is being secreted but inappropriately because the volume status is normal. Urine sodium is high typically greater than 40 milli equivalents per liter and high urine osmolality which tells that kidneys are under the influence of ADH and hence they are secrete hence they are making concentrated urine. Serum uric acid is seen to be low because of impaired excretion uh, sorry increased excretion. Some there are two theories behind it. They say one theory says that uric acid is handled just like sodium by the tubules and as they are trying to get rid of the sodium they also get rid of the uric acid as well and hence let's go. The other thing is dilutional. Uh, typical value is less than 4. Then you need to have a normal renal function, normal thyroid function and a normal adrenal function before you make the diagnosis of the SIDH because those things can cause hyponatremia. How do you treat? The, there are three components to the treatment of hyponatremia. One is you have to treat the underlying cause. Second is initial therapy to raise the serum sodium. Remember the rate of correction is 0.5 milli equivalents per liter per hour. There have been case reports even with um, a serum sodium correction of 10 milli equivalents giving rise to central pontine myelinolysis. But for board purpose, for exam purpose, you can remember as 0.5 milli equivalents per liter per hour. Then you have prolonged therapy in patients with persistent SIADH. So what are the different strategies that you can use? A strict fluid restriction. So you can imagine, so you're not diluting the sodium by taking the water in. So that's number one. Number two is intravenous saline. Now base this on the grounds of urine osmolality. Why do I say that is here is an example. You know that urine osmolality is fixed in SIADH. Just for the sake of discussion and making it simple, let's take that urine osm is fixed at 600 milliosms per liter. So kidneys are thinking that I have to keep making urine which is of 600 millimoles. When you use normal saline which is 300 milliosms which has 300 um, milliosms the osmolarity of the normal saline. So when you infuse a liter of normal saline in a patient with SIDH what kidneys will think is that now whatever the normal saline I have before it gets it from the kidneys out I have to take 500 ml of free water out of that normal saline so that I make that normal saline when it is getting out of the kidneys with an osmolality of 600. So what happens is that when you give a normal saline the kidneys will hold 500 ml of free water in it which dilutes the serum sodium. This is one of the diagnostic criteria as well that when you use the normal saline that the serum sodium starts dropping. So what you should do you should increase the tonicity of the saline so you can use 3% saline, 5% saline, there is a 27% saline as well but it's hardly used in any of the pharmacies because it's very tough. One strategy that you can use when you're using normal saline is you use loop diuretics because loop diuretics causes more free water excretion than sodium. So essentially by giving loop diuretics with normal saline you are raising the osmolarity of the saline. Salt tablets is a good thing. Urea contributing to the same thing and as you know that ADH is telling the kidneys to hold on to the water you use vasopressin receptor antagonist the vitro receptor antagonist which blocks the action of the ADH. The orally available agents are tolvaptan based on the SALT trial approved FDA used in the treatment of SIDH and heart failure associated hyponatremia, mozavaptan, satavaptan, lixivaptan. Conivaptan is the only intravenous form available. Two important points about the vitro receptor antagonist is one they cannot be used in a very severe hyponatremia cases because they have not been studied because you don't know how far is going to be the correction and second thing is in patients with liver disease you have to avoid this because 
there is a black box warning by FDA based on a trial which was done to look for progression of the polycystic kidney disease um, where they had some cases of hepatic failure. Then you have something which blocks the action of the ADH like demeclocycline and antibiotic. Thank you for watching this video from all our non-law team. Please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and keep watching the videos.